A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Monday, May 22nd. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. There are 179,000 people in the region facing food insecurity, and the Hudson Valley Food Bank is a lifeline for many families. Representatives of the agency and a number of public officials participated in a ceremonial groundbreaking. Executive Director Molly Nichols said the new 40,000-square-foot building will be able to fill the needs of the community. With this new facility, for decades to come, we will be able to honor our commitment to improve local access to food assistance and to close the meal gap in every one of the 23 counties we serve. The new Hudson Valley Food Bank is part of the Greater Food Bank of Northeastern New York. Democratic State Senator James Scoofus defeated Republican political newcomer Dori Hooley by 1,400 votes last fall, and she's now planning to take on the chairman of the Senate Investigations Committee once again in the fall 2024. At present, the Senate and Assembly are both controlled by Democrats, and the governor, Kathy Hochul, is also a member of that party. Hooley says the state would be better served by a balance of political power. I don't think that our state legislature has done enough to uh, ensure the safety of its residents through the very minimal amendments that they've made to the criminal justice reform. And Hooley says she plans to energize voters in the district through her campaign. Police in the town of Wallkill are now equipped with body-worn cameras, becoming the latest in a series of area police agencies, adding the tool to their work of keeping the community safe. Chief Robert Hurtman says all uniformed officers are now wearing the devices. The adoption of a body camera um, affirms our belief that the actions of our officers comport with sound constitutional policing and body camera footage uh, which is a public record, will support that belief. The um, town of Wallkill has had in-car body cameras, I'm sorry, in-car cameras for 20 years, and in more occasions than not, the cameras have been used to refute allegations of wrongdoing by officers. Town Supervisor George Serrano says the funding for those cameras came from a state grant. State Assemblyman Jonathan Jacobson is calling on the State Attorney General to investigate the Yerrick Israel Tony YIT Foundation and its CEO, Sharon Tony Finch, after Mid Hudson News debunked her recent claim that 20 homeless veterans under YIT care were displaced by asylum seekers at the Crossroads Hotel in the town of Newburgh. More news right after this. Find over 100 retailers allowing you to spend hours shopping safely at the Galleria at Crystal Run. Enjoy the big brands and the diverse selection of family-owned stores all in one location. The Galleria at Crystal Run offers dining options for everyone with Fuji 110 Grill, Allen's Mediterranean Grill, and Peru Cuisine. Discover the Mid-Hudson Valley's premier shopping, dining, and entertainment destination, the Galleria at Crystal Run. For more information, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or visit GalleriaCrystalRun.com. The New York-Pennsylvania Joint Interstate Bridge Commission has approved a major rehabilitation of the 1961 Calicoon, New York, Damascus, Pennsylvania Bridge to begin this fall and earmarked another $1 million plus to continue studying alternatives for the closed 1902 Skinner's Falls, New York, Milanville, PA Bridge at their annual meeting. The contract letting for the Calicoon Damascus Bridge is scheduled for August 24th. The more than $18 million approved will be shared equally by the two states. The purchase of an armored vehicle for the Ulster County Sheriff's Office is a wise move given the volatility in the country in recent years. Sheriff Juan Figueroa says the county legislature last week approved the purchase after the sheriff proposed it. If you look at what the country's been going through the last uh, few years and the statement from the the chair of the legislature, she's right. These shootings aren't stopping and we need to protect uh, not only the folks have to go in and, and save people, but our citizens as well. The Orange County Sheriff's Office has also had an armored vehicle that's on call for any community that has an incident that requires it. The old former City Club building on Grand Street in the city of Newburgh is going to be redeveloped. 
According to information provided from City Hall, the dilapidated structure lies in front of the Newburgh Free Library, not far from the old Dutch Reformed Church. The city entered into a site development agreement with the new 120 Grand Limited Liability Corporation in May of 2022. The purchase price was $51,000, with a closing to take place no later than July 31st, 2023. According to City Hall, the developer plans to open a restaurant, commercial kitchen, and takeaway market space. The city of New York has bused hundreds of asylum seekers to hotels in Westchester, Orange, and Rockland counties, as well as Sullivan County. To date, none has been sent to Ulster County. Kingston Mayor Stephen Noble says he's had no communication about locating migrants in his city, but noted it's a welcoming community. We have always, you know, welcomed uh, folks into our community. And, uh, you know, I think we've got some great um, organizations that have supported everyone um, coming into Kingston over the last decade. Um, But for now, we haven't, you know, been in touch with anyone from related to the more recent crisis. On Sunday, New York City sent asylum seekers to Dutchess County for the first time. With a 2.5 percent job growth in the 12 month period ending in April, Ulster County experienced the greatest number of new jobs in the Hudson Valley. The state labor department says the Orange Rockland Westchester metro area came in second with 2 percent job growth. Sullivan County had four tenths of a percent. Duchess Putnam saw a 1.3 percent decline in jobs. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.